Wasn't Paul in the turbo there? There goes the belt. Damn it. Well, we got a little bit of carnage, guys. The old naturally aspirated matrix trying to keep up with the turbos. Oh, yikes. That's not a blown belt. I'm just not having any luck with this machine. That is not good. Look to the right. Sheared right off. Unbelievable. So here's the primary clutch retaining bolt. So the head of that bolt actually sheared off. But the threads that thread into the crank look like they're pretty stripped. So I don't know if that crank's gonna be any good anymore. We'll have to see, but yeah, I don't know. I hadn't touched this bolt since uh, brand new. Might have been too tight, a little too much torque. But uh, either way, I'll have to figure out how to get this girl off the hill. No bueno. So just a quick update. Yesterday, as you saw in the GoPro footage, my primary clutch had come off. The bolt that holds the primary clutch on it must have been a little loose, coming undone ever so slightly. And then the side pressure of that primary clutch caused it to come right out and to shear the head of the bolt right off. So when I opened the panel, the primary clutch was off to the side, the bolt was already launched out, and so it disassembled itself quite nicely. We tried pulling the sled off the mountain last night. It was getting later in the day, starting to lose daylight. The sun wasn't set up that great, so we were just having a tough time trying to pull it out of some of the climbs. So I inspected the threads of the crankshaft and uh, the threads were still fine. So we ultimately decided to just head out, leave the sled on the mountain and try to find a new bolt. And basically it's just a matter at this point of putting the clutch back on and threading in the new bolt and tightening the new bolt. Luckily I was able to locate a new bolt here in Valemount. Found some guys on the hill were super helpful, made a few calls and were able to get me in touch with uh, a fellow by the name of Corey Endicott. So a huge shout out to him. He hooked me up with a new bolt. So we're headed back this morning. I'm gonna ride back up to the sled, bolt on the primary with the new bolt, and we should be good to go. So here is the new bolt for comparison purposes. And here's the bolt that came off my sled. So as we can see, threads got a little stripped when it got ejected out. And then the head sheared right off. So I don't know if there's a little bit of a impurity there, a little defect. You can see there's kind of a chip out. And there's the head of the bolt. So the fact that the bolt ejected itself leads me to believe that it was a little loose. If it were just a defected bolt head, then that would have just sheared off and the bolt would have stayed inside the crank. So I'm thinking it might have just been loose. And just for the record, I had never touched that from brand new. The sled's got about 250 miles on it. So we're gonna head back up right now, thread the new bolt in and should be able to ride the rest of the day. Okay, so we made it back out to the sled. Uh, like I said, we got our bolt yesterday. So all we're gonna do is I've already put the belt inside the sheaves of the secondary here. So I'm just gonna put it inside the sheaves of the primary, 
get it fit onto the end of the crank. And then that way you don't have to touch the secondary at all or open it up. So we're lined up. We've got our new bolt. So there's this little bit of a kind of a bushing washer and then a, an extra washer. And that just threads right in. So that is a 13 16. Oh yeah, imperial. <laughs> So obviously as you tighten, everything wants to spin. So got a long screwdriver, just gonna stick it in the glove so we're not rubbing on anything. So you just torque it to what? You just torque it till it strips and then back it off a quarter? Yeah, after, usually four oogadoogas does the trick. Great. That's manufacturer spec. So I think torque spec's just shy of 100 pounds. Um, obviously we don't have a torque wrench here, so you just want it nice and tight. And that should be everything right there. So I'm gonna kind of play around, ride, and just keep an eye on this bolt. Maybe put the wrench on it in a little bit just to make sure we're tight, but that sure beats the hell out of a helicopter. What's up guys? So I just wanted to touch on a couple things at the end of the video here. As some of you may know, this isn't the first breakdown I've had with this machine. If you're not familiar with the first time, you can go ahead and click the link in the description. I've got a whole nother video covering that one, so you can go ahead and get caught up. But for just a quick summary, my quick drive to secondary sprocket had failed and kind of the same situation, had to leave the sled on the mountain get some spare parts, bring them back up the next day, and then ride it out. So I'm sure a lot of you are wondering whether that was covered under warranty and uh, whether this situation that you just watched was covered under warranty as well. And actually both cases, players stepped up big time and uh, covered both situations under warranty without really any questions. So in the first scenario, they replaced both the secondary QD2 sprocket and the drive belt, even though the drive belt seemed to be fine, so they just went all out, replaced both, which was awesome. And then in this case, just recently, they're going ahead and they're going to replace that primary bolt, and they're also replacing the entire primary clutch. That may not even have been necessary, but they looked at it, there was a couple little nicks on it, so they're going ahead and replacing everything. So I do wanna say a huge shout out to Polaris. They've been absolutely phenomenal to deal with. Obviously, it'd be great to not have to deal with it at all, but uh, you know, in all honesty, these things happen, and they happen to all manufacturers. I just happened to get a lemon. You know, mine was one of the first sleds off the line, and with this year, just how the snow checks have been and how the part supply has been, it's a tough year for sledders and a tough year for manufacturers. So they're doing the best they can, by no means do I post these videos to try and bash Polaris in any way. Like I said, this happens to all manufacturers. It's actually quite the contrary because they've been so phenomenal to deal with. To me, that really stands out because as we know, these things are gonna happen no matter which manufacturer you're with. So it's really nice to know that when things do happen, they've got your back and they step up right away. So a huge shout out to Polaris. They've been phenomenal to deal with. And also a huge shout out to my local dealership, Riverside Motorsports in St. Albert. They've also been phenomenal and have gotten me back on the hill super quick. You know, again, not the ideal situation, but 
really at the end of the day, it's how it's dealt with and whether I'm able to keep riding and I have been able to. So it hasn't been anything too serious yet. Again, I'm not trying to post these videos to stir up any controversy or anything. It's just me trying to document my experiences, maybe trying to help some people learn in the future if they deal with the same scenarios. So that's all it is. So that being said, guys, I absolutely love this sled despite the couple issues I've ran into. We're gonna be back in action and we're gonna be hitting the mountain again. So we'll catch you in the next video.